Okay. All right, so we are coming up to the pretty much what we many consider the final trading week of the year. There are a couple of days next week, but everybody's uh, in between festivities and things of that nature. Um, so as you would gather, and as I said earlier last week, that uh, this week we're very, very light on data being released. Okay, last week was a, a quite a volatile week as we predicted. We had lots and lots of movements. Uh, there were opportunities pretty much everywhere. We did run a review class on the Thursday where we saw a lot of the, the, the trades that we had predicted panning out and setting up as such. But for this week, uh, pretty much this is it. This is all I have in terms of data. And uh, I guess the highlight is pretty much just the US data. Okay, so there's unemployment claims, new home sales, GDP figures, okay. Um, if I had to pick out the pair of the week this week, look, um, it's either going to be the cable, GBP USD, or the Kiwi dollar, okay. Trade balance figures for the Kiwi tomorrow morning uh, are usually, they can be quite dramatic, okay. Coupled up with US data later in the week, it may be the one that moves the most this week, um, but other than that, we're pretty light on. Just notice uh, that you know here it says on the 25th. Um, it's the 25th in my time, but basically in the US it's the 24th. Okay, so these times again, Sydney or Australian Eastern Standard Daylight times. Okay, one thing that I will say as we come into uh, the fest, uh, the holiday season is pretty much uh, the markets, a lot of the professional traders, uh, a lot of the fund managers, banks and so forth, they've pretty much settled on their positions for, for the year. So they won't, they won't do too much intraday trading. So volumes become a little bit lighter. All right. Uh, it is a great opportunity for those of us that are on holidays. You get an opportunity to just to observe and, and check the market out, uh, possibly a little bit of light trading. Okay, uh, as a rule of thumb for myself, um, I pretty much stopped trading uh, around about the 15th, the 17th of December, and, and probably I start to look again at the markets from about the 5th, even though it's a very light week as it starts up again, and probably back into full full swing of things by about the 15th of January. That's just the general nature of how the market works. That's pretty much what I've done for the last eight, nine years. Um, you do need some time off just to refresh it and all that. So if you need some time off, fantastic. And if you want to do some catching up and some learning, it is a good time to observe the markets because behavior is still behavior. With less volume or more volume, the, the the principles are, are still the same okay it just f for the record there are only two days that the markets are non-tradable and that is Christmas Day itself the 25th of J uh, December and New Year's Day the 1st of January so Boxing Day and things like that the markets are open okay um, like I said much lighter in terms of volume all right so so this is what we have this week so in short summary probably the US is going to be the the one that moves the most I guess while I'm still here from a fundamental point um, is very very interesting and a lot of the analysis that I'm going to do today is going to carry this theme throughout um, but basically Miss Yellen came out late last week and pretty much indicated that there's a high probability of a rates increase in the first quarter for the US dollar. Okay, so what does this basically mean? Essentially what it means is the dollar strength and uh, it, it kind of fundamentally ties in lots and lots of things. Uh, as we look at each individual chart, we'll, we'll analyze the impact, what it can do, and how it sits in with our technicals as well. Okay, but just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, it was pretty much, it, it's not a given. Okay, the market is expecting it, and uh, who knows what may happen. Okay, so on that note, let me get started. Let me get rid of this and bring on my trading platform and we'll get straight into it. Okay, 
Aussie dollar for our chart. Now, this channel and this situation, you know, when they do come up, if we're, now that we are all equipped with the correct tools like we've introduced recently, price action trading by popular demand, and finally I found a way to kind of incorporate it in, a, I guess, more black and white. It's easy to see the trades. Um, and you can see how it's been working very, very well. This channel's just been giving and giving and giving. It just continues to channel down. Okay, remember what I just said about the US and Miss Yellen and rates increase. If that happens, that is the fundamental assistance that we would require to basically drive our Aussie dollar down and through the 80 level. Okay, so if that should happen, we could see that uh, our Aussie dollar enter the 70 region. Okay, we've got as low as 8. I think we just touched 80 or just or there, uh, sorry, 80.9 80, 80 or something like that. I'll just double check. Um, but everything is now lined up, okay, for that move to take place. So with that in mind, I'm still happy to trade this four-hour uh, channel over here, okay. And if you have a, a very, very careful look, uh, there, were, there was a couple of other trades that happened in between us last time that we chatted let's see I just want to see if anybody saw this if anybody took it as well as a daily inside candle I'll have a look at that in one moment and um, but on the four hour channel okay this is the four hour channel the last time that we got close to the top resistance is this candle combination there these two there and can everybody clearly see what the trade would be We can all see that <clears throat> this was a inside candle combination, okay, where candle two is inside candle number one. Not the engulfing one, Bijan. Yes, it was an engulfing candle, but the trading opportunity happened before the engulfing candle itself. Okay, if you have a look at the candles that has the fractal, it's this one here, so we inspect these two candles right over there which enabled you to jump on the trade right there okay the trade did get ahead um, some 60 70 pips and right now has retraced okay so if you did not take that trade and you are interested in taking that trade it's a valid trade still and you're pretty much going to get entry at around about the same level as uh, you would have on the break. The only difference is now from a lot of the things that we've been looking at recently when if you had got in straight away the trade got up oh no it didn't get that far only got up about 30 pips okay so there's a lot of room for that trade to head towards where we want it to head okay so it could be there there's probably about 100 pips in that so if anybody's interested that's a trade there. Now the other option is that finally the channel breaks and breaks upwards okay now it could happen all right and it could bounce back to say 83 or something like that that still does not change the bias that we're heading down and that we want to go down okay so uh, that doesn't change that at all um, if we do get a confirmation break on the upside we know how to trade that as well so we've got an opportunity right now that we are getting very very close to the fringe okay so what there's two things that I'm going to look for one is I'm going to look for the next fractal on the top side so if for example this candle ends up here something like that and then the next candle does something like this okay I'll probably get a fractal up on that one and then I'm ready to hit it again on the downside. Okay, that's one option. The other option is that finally this candle, for example, comes up and closes right up there, taking everything out and clearly, clearly breaking the channel. I don't want it to be close. I want it to clearly close well above the channel. At that point, you may be interested in the return trade. 
okay now this kind of trade here that I've just signaled there it's it's not a long-term trade okay it would be some kind of a, a pullback and then and to be honest the trade that I would really be interested in if we did get a bounce back it would be somewhere up there to go back down okay that's the trade that I would really really be interested in but you can take advantage of many now Stephen's saying shouldn't we wait for the next reversal sign uh, is that for a short or for a long uh, Stephen if you can just let me know and then I'll answer your question for a short okay yes if you want to you can wait like I just said for the next fractal to appear at the top and then hit it um, however if you had taken this trade there where I've marked it right now you would still be in this trade okay so and if you sell now you're selling it still with the same reasons as before nothing has happened to signal the contrary so it's up to yourself okay alright so with the Aussie dollar um, like I said for those of you who are really looking for a trade there is one right now that we actually triggered about 12 hours ago or actually late Friday um, and it's still valid okay so I can still see it valid one of the good things about this particular trade is I just noticed it give me one second let me show you there is a, a nice triangle as well so if I look here there's this kind of triangle there as you can see obviously we use the top line as well that is forming it's a triangle inside of a channel okay so if we get a setup around the top here somewhere in this area here we could get the straight break through the through the triangle and head towards the other side of the channel okay so it's not set yet if you're going to trade it that way you can short right now based on this candle as I explained earlier let me have a quick look at the daily someone said there was something on the daily bear with me one second oh, I've just deleted my channels I hate it when I do that sorry I just gotta set these back up properly Okay, there we go. Daily, let's have a look. Okay, there's three inside candles. Okay, those three inside candles are basically showing you the same triangle that I just pointed out. Okay, so if I mark it, it's really just doing this. There's a little triangle in there. Now, if I was going to trade the break down remember if I'm on a trend going down all right I want the fractal to show up at the top on a pullback so that I can take the trade down in if I strictly look at this chart here the fractal has showed up at the bottom okay so this see the fractals down here at the bottom right there so if I have a look at these two candle combinations I would technically want to trade this upward alright this is against the trend so this daily candle formation is not valid to look for a short trade okay yes they are inside candles okay however it's in the incorrect spot to look for a short trade does that make sense everybody no it doesn't make sense okay give me one second I'll explain it I'll try my best okay let's talk about inside candles all right and let's let me just draw a candle over here let's make this a, a positive bull candle okay and this is what that candle looks like and straight afterwards we get another candle and let's just say that this candle looked something like this 
okay and we'll give it a little bit of a wick and a little bit of a wick so candle 2 is contained by candle 1 everybody with me so far yep okay great inside candles the way that you would trade an inside candle is you would basically when the when the next candle comes along which would start over there somewhere okay you the idea is that we trade the break down or oops that lines a bit crooked sorry or the trade the break up so that's how you trade the inside candles okay now inside candles on their own that it's not enough to take a trade okay and, I, and I'm gonna just show you I'm just gonna scan through a couple of charts and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean you if you see an inside candle it's not enough to take a trade to 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 guess up or down it, it's not the way it works however if you find an inside candle combination at the top of resistance or at the bottom of support or inside a triangle inside a channel inside something something else the probability increases significantly so if the market was coming from all the way down here like that gives you this combination puts a little fractal at the top of this candle over there then instantly you you don't want to trade that that direction the up direction is is not the way that you want to trade it because the fractal is at the top the only trade that you're going to look for is the downward trade okay and then we're using the inside candles as a reversal it's coming from underneath doing the combination puts up the fractal and then we're looking for it to come back down to reverse back okay does that make sense to everybody before I need to see that you all understand it first before I move to the next bit yes great okay so with that in mind with that in mind what I've just shown you now I look at this combination that we have over here let me zoom in a bit more okay now it is very very clear that we're in a down trend okay so when I talked about price action to us uh, with you guys uh, a couple of weeks back if I'm in a downtrend I'm only interested in trading down okay so I'm not looking for up trends so what I want to do is every time the market comes down does the little dip I look for a candle combination that has the fractal and then I see if, if I can find what I'm looking for and then I'm happy to take the trade this one over here yes it's an inside candle but the fractal is at the bottom which would insinuate a break upward now that is a legitimate trade as well but that trade has a much lower probability than this trade that I'm trying to circle up there okay so and this is not the trade that I showed you this trade trying to take this trade up is you are trying to pick the bottom out of the market it is one of the most hardest things to do okay we're not interested in picking the bottom we're interested in picking the pullback are we clear beautiful okay I think I missed a few questions in there just let me just go back one second Okay, Bijan said, what about if we break, f wait for the break down? Okay, so, so, if I still, here's the sequence, and there's there, so basically wait for the break down. That's okay. That's what we're actually saying. Now, an easier way to see it is if I step down a few time divisions, and then essentially what we got is we got a triangle. 
okay so and that's basically what I said before let's have a look I'll zoom it out a little bit if I go into say a four hour go into a one hour you might see it a bit better okay see if I've stepped into a one hour chart and essentially what I've done I can see that triangle you can see it there okay and you might be able to trade it that way okay so what I one important thing to to note okay if you do step into a one hour time frame okay when we use the way that I've been showing you how to use candles and price action don't apply that to anything smaller than four hours okay uh, you wait till you get a bit more experience with it you can but I prefer that you don't um, so if you're going to go into the one hour time frame you're going to have to wait for a candle to close kind of like that to take out those lows and then on the next candle okay you're in the trade alternatively if we go into a four hour time frame basically I'm going to be trading the channel the channel conditions up here okay are we all clear on the Aussie dollar yep we all are fantastic now if there is a, a rate increase for the US dollar this is the cocktail that we want this is what we're after we could break into the 70s okay now I don't think that's going to happen this week because that rate cut is predicted for January so we've got to wait for that however if um, if it was a trade that you really wanted to be part of right now is when you you have to start to position yourself in for that trade so any pullbacks okay are selling opportunities all right so what I mean by that is if the market every time the market does that you know you may want to take a little bit of that okay that's generally how people position themselves into the trade all right okay let's move on euro usd okay euro usd what have i got there's a couple of things okay euro usd uh we called these i sent that out last week through twitter we talked about it on friday it's broken even lower and it's taken out this low the trade's up about 100 pips for anybody that's still in it um if you're kind of if you're not in it right now is not a good time to come to come to the party okay we're coming up to the 122 handle and uh, it may reject us for a little bit before it actually makes that break down so the best thing that I can see for this trade and if this is a trade that you want to position yourself to take advantage um, of anything that may take place with the US we're going to try and get in on a pullback so let me see if I can find one for us by the way is anybody still in this trade the big engulfing candle on on the fractal lowest is great well done Oh, I missed a question here from Greg. H4, still wait for the fractal at the top before thinking about selling. Uh, you're talking about the Aussie dollar, Greg. Um, okay. Sorry, I'll just backtrack quickly to... Yes, you can wait for the fractal, but the fractal on its own is, is not the entry signal. The fractal, then you've got to check out what the, what the candles look like. Okay, sometimes you don't get an opportunity for it. Okay, so that's fine. Alternatively, alternatively, you can get in on the trade right now based on them, them two. Okay, uh, that's the that's the other choice that you have. Okay, so if you if you're uncomfortable about that, then you're just gonna have to wait, wait for the next fractal to appear, and then wait to see if you get the candle com combination that you need okay all right let me go back to the US Euro USD let me step into a four hour I'm interested in seeing a pullback and I did find one for us okay 
all I've done is picked out the high up there to this low down here draw it in and then if I come back here now remember I'm interested in selling into this and being part of this trade okay because if you have not jumped this trade already you're you're quite far away from it all right so what we want to do is try and get a bit of price so I'm using my Fibonacci levels and I notice that my 23.6 coincides with my 123 level okay so I'm gonna place an order here I'm not gonna place a 2040 though because this is a trade that I want to position myself for the long jump down okay so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna try and sell at 123 I'm going to give myself a 100 point stop loss, okay, 124, and I'm going to aim for 121. Size yourself accordingly. If you are already in the trade, that's fine. You're already in it, okay. For those of you who are not in it and want to join, this is how you can basically do it. So let me just place this order. Give me one moment. I'm going to do a $50 risk on this trade. I could place it with my mini terminal. I don't have it loaded on this one, so I have to work it out manually. So I'm going to jump it at 123.00. I'm going to try 0 0.05. It's actually much easier to do it with a mini terminal, to be honest. Uh, 120, what did I say? 124. and take profit at 121 and if something happens along the way I may reassess it but here we go done everybody follow what I just did yep so again I'll repeat if you are already in the trade don't worry about it okay what I'm trying to do is a market to pull back, get me in, and I'm trying to take a ride down to there, and I've given myself a 100 point stop loss so that I can ride it in. This is not a 2040, I'm trying to take a, a, a trend trade and just to get a, a nice entry into it, okay? If I show you what it looks like on my daily chart, there it is, you can see that I'm trying to enter where my green line is just there somewhere okay we all clear on on this one and I'm just I've, I've just put a $50 risk on it and that's what I'm after okay great let me see if there's anything else on the euro USD just bear with me one moment I can't see anything else. Does anybody have any questions on the Euro USD? No? We all good? Okay. Let me move on to the next one then. Let's have a look at the GBP USD. Okay. This one at the moment seems to be the toughest one. It's just ranging, but it's not ranging in a nice way. It's um, If I look at it on my daily chart, you can see there the area. Have a look at this. It doesn't know where to go, up or down. It's just plain in the middle. So let's try and take advantage of that. If I step into my four hour chart, I've clearly marked out the boundaries. Okay, it looks to me like the boundary is around about the 155, 155.40-ish area. And at the top, it's about 158. 
all right so what that means is I'm looking for things to be occurring inside if I don't see anything occurring inside what I'm going to be trying to to do is as we approach either one of these sides I'm really going to be looking the easier trade to find is this one okay this is the trades that I'm going to be looking for but I'll keep an eye out for that one and for that one as well all right now it's right kind of in the middle right now so I really don't want to do anything um, but that's the only thing that I can see uh, as I approach the fringes something may present itself okay uh, but where we are right now I don't really want to participate there's kind of like a triangle happening there but it's it's not it's too steep to be honest like uh, let me just draw it for you so that you can see what I'm looking at it's I wouldn't really call that a proper triangle um, I would I would I much prefer it with at least a bit more angle like this so I'm not willing to trade that as a triangle okay so that's why I'm not mentioning it I just thought I'll point it out so that you can see what visually they should look like compared to what this one looks like but right now on the GBP USD I don't really have anything at all I can see the double bottoms we've got that top area up there I'm just gonna wait and see what happens as I approach 155.40 and when I approach that 158 area okay did anybody see anything on the GBP that you wanted to talk about mention and I'll have a look at it for you No, we're all good on it. Okay, we'll just have to sit this one out and just wait to see what happens. Okay, all right, let's uh, carry on. Let's have a look at uh, gold. Now, gold right now is um, it? It's really coming into that triangle is now pretty solid. Okay, so because there's so much room between inside there the next set of trades there's, there's possibly three trades that we can get out of this if this turns out now listen to what I'm saying if this turns out to be a nice converging triangle and then we get the break the way that we want it from here we should be able to pick up three trades okay the first trade is going to be over here in this direction and there's plenty of space for it okay the next one will be there and then the next one will be the break okay we may get a bit more bounce in the middle but after that it gets a bit too tight and it's it, we may not get an opportunity but these two we could get two trades out of that plus the break in an ideal world based on what Miss Yellen said and about the dollar, the US dollar and interest rates possibility increasing okay um, that would basically mean that a lot of money would shift over towards the greenback which would basically depreciate gold alright, uh, money shifting across which would make this pattern perfect as such all right now is that going to happen I don't know I don't have a crystal ball but everything is kind of lined up for it so this is what trading is um, sometimes the best description that I can give anybody is if anybody to give you a surfing analogy it's kind of like standing on the beach and just looking at the waves and then you see this wave coming from really 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 far away and it's starting to form this is what's happening over here now we already spotted this around about here somewhere okay and it's already progressed through a little bit so we just have to keep watching be patient because if this trade turns out to be the way that we want it to be it could be the the trade that makes you a really healthy return for at least the first quarter of your trading week and if you are a position trader 
this is the way that you would basically do it okay so I'm gonna wait this one out I, w I really do want to participate and I'm looking for those first two the first point that I'm looking for is here okay and um, I prefer it to go down first before up okay and um, so this is my first trade that I'm looking for down here so hopefully it'll happen within about two weeks maybe earlier let's let's wait and see um, but does everybody understand what I'm talking about yep fantastic there was a bit of divergence here and for those it wasn't concrete enough for, for us to take advantage and the confirmation would have come in too late but just to point it out you can see the top there okay definitely heading in a downward direction and then you can see the tops here heading in an upward direction this was very difficult to to catch because the reality is you would have only really to be honest you know you would have only maybe caught it somewhere in here okay so but that's okay um, if it if there was to happen again it's going to be easier on the next one because now I have a support line or a resistance line okay so the first time is difficult because I don't know where the lines are that's why when we do pattern trading it, is, it assists us so much okay but I just thought I'd point it out um, because many times when you guys say to me oh look there's a bit of divergence over here and I say yes but I need to wait a bit longer because it's not confirmed this is exactly what I'm talking about it's quite difficult to catch a first one without a reference point in there somewhere all right so but nevertheless there was and it was confirmed after it happened so the reality is it's very difficult to, to trade it live this particular one all right okay let me move on US yen okay what have I got here okay we spotted this triangle last week in in the class we said it was a bit of a difficult one we talked about it on Friday so I won't spend too much time on it but it did what we wanted it to do which was pretty good and it nearly matched that distance there so so that was fine um, one thing that I'll do will say about the US yen I'm hearing from analysts in the industry they're talking about things like 130 now when I said to you guys 120 I th I have to go back and look at the old recordings but I think we were at about 109 110 and 120 would have sounded like surely you're dreaming it would have sounded silly okay now I heard 130 and I'm thinking surely you're dreaming right but let's think about it okay because this could be a trade that you want to participate in all right now definitely for me this is one that I'm going to try and catch um, I already caught a really nice chunk on the way to the 120 but I really want to catch this one and there's two major reasons for it one is um, US strength rates increase blah 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 they're going great guns okay recovery and it's just signal and power power for the greenback okay the other side is the BOJ they just want weakness you know and they're in turmoil and you know abonomics as they call it you know everything's in a little bit of chaos so they could weaken even more so basically they're two economies that are at the extreme opposites of each other which will basically magnify this move all right so having said that what I'm really looking for now I don't know if it's going to go to 130 guys and I just it's on a recorded session here so that you hear it uh, I don't know where it's going to go okay but what I do know is that I want to position myself to take advantage of some of this move all right so we've already had a an unbelievable run uh, the US dollar is everybody's back in it all of a sudden so when that happens it can really 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 take off okay so if I'm thinking with that in mind the trade that I'm interested in over here is I want to start to position myself 
and the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to try to look for some pullbacks so let's have a quick look let me get rid of this so I don't get confused okay it depends how aggressive I want to I want to join in okay because just don't forget remember we've got US data coming out right at the end of the week if it comes out the correct way this can just get away with you and it doesn't give you another chance to get in okay so I'm going to try and get in at 118 now it's not quite a fib number combination but this is not a fib combo type trade um, it's kind of close-ish I'm going to try and jump it at 118 118.06 okay so what I'm going to try and do is 118 06 long and I'm going to place a stop just below the whole lot which is at about 115 let's make it 40 can someone just work out what my risk is in in pips and my target's going to be what am I going to target let me have a look I'm going to put in an initial 123 to start me off okay so that's about 500 pips on the trade so this is the trade that I have in mind for this one okay size yourself accordingly did someone work out how much pips that is I don't have a calculator give me one sec 266 thank you thanks guys okay so 266 um, I'm just gonna do my mini terminal here because it's just gonna annoy me it just works it out for me much quicker bear with me one second and I'm gonna put a 100 Dollar, dollar risk on on the trade. Okay, so I'm gonna buy. It's a buy limit at what did I say? One eighteen oh six. So one eighteen oh six. Uh, I'm gonna go for a cashed risk. I said I wanna. I'm gonna put a. Well, let's make it eighty dollars. Okay, eighty dollar risk on it, and I'm got my stop is two six six. Is what you guys say. So two hundred and sixty six. My take profit. Um. I'll just adjust it in a moment. I'll just make five hundred. I think I said. And that's it. Let's place it. Okay, beautiful. Can everybody see the trade? And how big is the trade? Let's have a look. 0 0.03. Okay, so there you go. So if you want to take the... I, I, what did I do? Did I do $80 or did I do 100 Can just someone remind me? I missed... At 0 0.03, $80. Okay, so if, if anybody wants to take the same identical trade, the size is 0 0.03. Okay, so when I look at my daily chart here, let me get rid of my fib lines now. I don't need them anymore. So when I look at my daily chart, what I'm trying to do is I want to join in on this run forward okay but I don't want to pay the current price so I want this to come back a little bit get me in the trade my stop is down here if I get stopped out it's going to cost me 80 bucks and I've put in an initial target up there I may change it when and if we break that level over there okay so but this will start me off all right now everybody clear with that Does it make sense? And in the back of my head, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking this number over here. Now, I've just done this trade as such. You know, you can size yourself at whatever level you like, but I'm just giving you an example. Um, and I'd like to, you know, 125, I, I do like 125. 125, if the fundamentals go correctly, I can see that, okay? Um, you know, and who, who knows, 
all right so this is the kind of trade that we, we, we must be alert to okay all right so that's our US yen let me see what else we have euro yen okay we spoke about the euro yen whether we were in an uptrend or a low trend are we consolidating there was a there was varied views on our opinion I still feel that where yes I can see perhaps a bit of consolidation starting to happen okay uh, not confirmed yet starting to happen um, but I still feel that we could be in an uptrend so I'm still happy to take that trade that we called out we have not been triggered yet and now we've got one two three four inside candles in a row we have an order in Lois I don't have it on this account or do I no I don't I don't have it on this account Um, what's our what's our, ta our target entry Lois if you have an order could you just call it out it's going to be around about 146 uh, 80 or something like that is that right 46.78 did anybody get triggered in the trade because this candle got as high as so almost triggered but not triggered yet okay so we still have an order all right and the order that we have is based on that we're on an uptrend and we're trying to buy a pullback just to explain it for those who didn't see when we did it there's the fractal candle number one candle number two inside candles of each other and as we break that we take the trade now consequently the other one came a little bit lower and this one came a tiny bit lower again okay so we've got a 44.94 stop lower says let me check where that is where does that put me 44.94 okay so it's just underneath this candle there and uh, 4631 46 it can't be 46 Lois it's, it's 48 or something 148 31 or something like that all right let me just review it and let's see okay we can make an adjustment I'll place it again I don't have it on this account that's why I'll place it so it's a uh, buy stop 46.78 oh let me just adjust my volume how much is that going to cost me 190 pips so let's go with 0.03 78 stop at 140 Let's make it 44.90. Make an adjustment if you have to. 44.90 for the stop. And the take profit, we're going to go for 49.95. Uh, mm, let me think. One, 150 is going to give us a bit of a problem okay because naturally it's a decade number so let's um, let's go for about 149.60 just just fall a bit short and then we can reap if, if we get a pullback we can always jump back in on the trade okay and we can be the ones that help it pull back and bounce okay so 40 149.60 so if you want to make a readjustment let's have a look what this looks like okay okay looks good it's at least two 2.2 2 to 1 maybe 2.5 to 1 okay so there's the entry as a buy stop breaking trade there's the stop and there's the target just shy of this top as the market 
gives us a bit of problem trying to break through that. Okay, we all clear with that one? Yep. Any questions on that trade for the reasons we've actually got now? two three four inside candles and if I step down into like a, a smaller time frame you you will see this very very clearly like on a four hour or even a one uh, let me zoom out so you can see the triangle forming on itself here and this is being caused by all those inside candles on themselves now on a four hour chart I hope it doesn't break down. I will actually, it's not a problem. We're not in danger. Okay, because if it breaks down, remember, if it breaks down, we have to go back and cancel that order. Okay? So, and if you have a look, sometimes when you trade a triangle, if you trade, if you step up a time frame to a daily, it helps you line up your, your entry. Look where we're entering. We're not entering there, breaking there. We're actually entering breaking the high okay which is a good is a it's a good spot okay I actually like that trade all good okay let me carry on Kiwi dollar ah Kiwi dollar we picked that one up we were over here when we did the class, but we picked up during the week. And then, did anybody take this one? There's another nice one there as well. Did anybody take that trade long on the Kiwi dollar? No? Okay. So, this channel has been going really, really good. I know that this part here came out of the channel. So, if you didn't take this one, I can totally understand that okay so but that top one is essentially let's just say it's not a channel so let me just move it for example oops wrong one so give me one second so if it's not a channel I can just put them both on top of each other and it's just a, a straight out resistance line okay so what does that mean now there's talk of the Kiwi dollar going to 75. Okay, we're about 250 pips away from that. So what I think may happen, and I'll say it again, just like last week, because of the nature, how has it been going just like this? It looks to me that it's going to probably do this and come back and I'm going to look for a trade right there. Okay, this trade a little bit more difficult to trade. The only way that you can trade this one is go back and bring bring this channel back into play so bring it back in like that and then you can try and find the spot there okay this was a bit more difficult so if you want to ignore that one let's look for the next upward touch now when you look for an upward touch as well the only other thing that I can see to to keep note of is the following um, just keep an eye that you don't form um, let's say if this comes down but it doesn't get through here okay and it bounces around about here then start to look for if that happens start to look for a triangle forming like this okay and if that starts to happen then we can start to look for this trade upwards as well all right you can look for the upward one at any time uh, but it looks more likely because of the fundamentals and the way that it's shaping up it looks more likely downward all right we're in the middle um, I'm on holidays officially as soon as I finish this class so if I see it I'll send out a Twitter okay uh, I'll, I'll push it out um, but does that make sense guys we can see that yep okay so where we are right now I can't really do anything but I will be able to do something as soon as I approach that top or the bottom all right okay and last one for the week 
Can anybody see anything there? I'm on a four hour chart. Can anybody see anything there of any substance? There's a trade that's that's about to occur. It's a trade that I, I don't really want to take, but it's about to happen. Okay, can anybody see it? If I go to a one hour chart, it's very, very clear for you. What about now? Can we see that this is like a, a really nice consolidating region? Yes, that's it. So we're going to have an opportunity to take a break in trade down. Okay, so I've stepped into a, a one hour chart. We are right now at the fringe. What I'd like, I've got 32 minutes to wait. Two ways to, to play this. Number one, this candle right now could close down here. And if that's the case, feel free to go for it. Okay. Alternatively, even if it if it doesn't, if it, it closes below, but you still feel uncomfortable, what you can do is you can wait for a pullback into your 13 exponential moving average. Okay, meaning wait for it to pull back to like that 13 EMA, and then you can hit it that way. Any problem about this, Euro Aussie is inverse proportional, uh, inverse correlating to the Aussie US dollar, if this goes down, that insinuates that the Aussie dollar is coming back up. It is a shorter term trade, so I don't really see an issue with it. Um, I just feel uncomfortable about it. That's all. All right. But it's there. It's pretty clear. Uh, there's nothing else that I can see on the Euro Aussie at the moment. Okay. So, yes, it is a short. We're very, very close to breaking that. Uh, you've got 31 minutes for this candle to finish and we will know where we sit and how you want to play it. I'm on a one hour chart. Okay. Any questions on anything today guys? I'm just going to check what we've done. Let's summarize what we've got. Okay. Aussie dollar. We're trading the channel and we're observing a triangle inside a channel euro usd we are trying to sell into it we've got a sell at 123 we have a 100 pip stop and a 200 pip target gbp usd we're right in the middle of consolidation so we've got to wait till we get to the fringes gold we're still waiting to approach the boundaries of that triangle uscn we have an order for the US Yen. We are trying to buy in to set up for a longer term trade. And we're trying to get in at 118.06. And we've got our stop at 115.40. And target at 123.06 to start us off. Uh, Euro Yen. We have, well, we have a triangle, but we've also got inside daily candles that we're trying to trade the break up. Uh, in a continuation of the uptrend. Okay, we're trying to get in at 146.78. Okay, that's pretty much uh, the Kiwi dollar. We're in the channel. We just got to wait it. And the Euro Aussie, we got to break down. We got to wait half an hour to confirm. Any questions on anything, guys? Thank you, Lois. Um, thank you, everybody, guys. This is, like I said, this is the last. Uh, I, I did send out an email, a, a second email, just letting everybody uh, know. Um, this is the last class for 2014. I wish you all a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, time with the family is always good. Sometimes we need to relax. Um, I know that my eyes need to relax from looking at screens, so this is the time that I try not to look too much. Um, the markets are a little bit slower, so that always helps. Um, we'll be back uh, from the 5th of January next year. If anybody, uh, I'll still my phone's still 
uh, I'm, I'm not leaving the country or anything like that. I'm, I'm just taking some time out. Might do a bit of camping with my little boy. Um, if you send through any emails, I'll still see them and I will still respond. Um, we'll kick off again on the 5th of January, which is a Monday, to to the normal uh, spiel. Okay, so we'll, we'll continue with Monday, Thursdays. Uh, I do have a couple of new things next year. Um, price action trading has been very, very nice to us towards the last two months. So I'm going to try and incorporate it a little bit more. Um, and more so on the copy accounts so that we can uh, hopefully start to move in the correct direction. Okay, once again, thank you all. If you do have any questions, feel free to get in contact with me. Uh, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I will see you all on the 5th of January. Take care, guys. Bye for now.